Welcome to another episode of Jim's Love and Garden. Today represents a very special episode because it's the 100th video and it's also almost to the day one year since I launched the first video. So, welcome to another episode of Jim's Love and Garden. Okay, so it's time to put out the uh, the kale, both types. Um, and as you can see, what I've done is this is the uh, the first tunnel. I've dug it all over, fetched all the weeds out. So I've got a bit of a bucket of weeds here. Um, what I've done is I've trod all the ground down um, because when you plant brassicas, what you want to do is get the ground reasonably firm when you put them in. And then um, I've just raked it all level, um, so it's all ready to go. So we're now ready to put the uh, the kale in. Now. Um, Whereas with the, uh, I don't know if you can see them through there, but that's the, um, that's the, uh, the broccoli. The broccoli you plant, I don't know, sort of 14, 15 inches apart. With the, um, with the Nero kale, what you want to do is allow reasonable amounts of room because they do grow to quite big plants. So what you want to be doing is allowing something like um, 18 inches between plants or, you know, like a nine inch um, radius circle all, you know, all the way around each plant. So I'll put the first line in um, about kind of 10 inches or so um, away from the, um, the edge of the, um, the tunnel. And what I've done is, if you can see, I've just put some string along. I've also um, put some sort of cane um, halfway along and I've actually tied it along there as well, um, just, to, just to hold back the net. The reason I've done that is what you need to be careful of with the net is um, that can kind of rub and chafe against the leaves which which causes the leaves to be discoloured and obviously that's the bit you want to eat so you want to keep them as, as in pristine condition as possible. So with all that said um, wh what I'm going to do is basically put one row of um, kale along the line here as you can see on the ground and then I'm just going to come um, this way about a foot or so and I'm going to be putting one sort of halfway between each one so I'm going to have one there, one here, one there so they kind of zigzag up the up the um, up the tunnel. So I'll do that now. Okay. So there couldn't be anything easier really to put them in. So all you need to do is just make sure you've got all the all the ground nice and level. You've got any sort of big chunks and stuff like that broken up as you go along. Obviously, I've already raked this once, but uh, there is the odd uh, little bit, bits and bobs that are sort of quite broken down now. Obviously, the first one's going to go somewhere around uh, somewhere around here. And what I'm doing is I'm actually digging the hole. Um, that side of the line, so when I take the line out, it'll it'll be uh, you know easy to um, sort of separate from the plant, so I don't damage any of the leaves, which is easily done. So take your um, take your brassica, and then basically all you've got to do, you can see the roots are coming out of the bottom, so these are more than more than ready to uh, more than ready to come out. And obviously I'm trying my damage not to um, sort of damage the plant. Now. What you want to do is just dig a hole at the same depth as it was in the pot and then obviously just back the soil back around the plant and give that a really good um, firming in. Now obviously the next plant is going to be um, here and if you, if you wanted to measure 18 inches it's basically um, that much so between your little finger and your thumb on both hands that's, that's kind of 18 inches for, at least for me. So if you've got hands normal size like I have, um, that's kind of 18 inches. Um, again, you can see the roots of um, this is uh, this is why I use the square pot, as you can see, the roots of kind of the knots sort of going round and round and round, as such they're kind of trying to find the bottom. So, so next plant in there, nice and gentle, and then just back the ground, back round, and again it's been buried at the same level as it was in the pot now. Any leaves that you've got like that one there, it's gone slightly, slightly yellow. Um, I'd be, 
um, advising you to take that off because um, you don't really want that. That's going to be uh, that's not going to sort of recover from that. So any damaged leaves or anything like that that you've got on the plant, um, remove them as you put them in. So they're they're sort of 18 inches apart. I'm just getting a third one out. So what I want to do is go halfway between the plant and uh, kind of somewhere there. Now note I've only got one line in. What I always do is just put one line in and then judge um, where the other plants need to be. And now that's also nine inches away from kind of where the path's going to be here. So um, I know that as I walk through to water I'm not going to be knocking any of the plants. Make sure I've got no stones at the bottom to uh, interfere with the roots forming properly. And again just bump that in nice and, nice and firm, just put your weight on it. I wouldn't uh, kind of stand round it, um, most certainly if you're my weight anyway, but uh, just make sure you know you've firmed it in. And what you do is when you when you're doing that as well, what you do is you form like a kind of a bowl round the bottom of the plant, and then when you're watering them in, obviously the water will be concentrated on the root. So I'll do exactly the same thing all the way up the tunnel, um, like I've shown you here, and then I'll show you when I've finished. Okay, so now we're in the other tunnel. As you can see, I've um, I've dug all the ground, levelled it off. Uh, walked all over it, um, just like uh, the rest of the brassicas, and um, basically raked it all level. Now I'm ready to put in the um, the purple broccoli. So I'll just quickly show you that now. But the method is almost identical to the uh, the normal calabrese, the green broccoli. Okay, so I'm going to be um, planting this in the usual formation. So this, I've, I've got I've just got a line running down the middle, and so I'm going to be planting these um, around kind of 14 inches apart. So the first one, basically you need about seven inches round each of the plants. So I'm just gonna dig the hole. I know this one's out of shot here. Um, but basically the first one's gonna go there in the corner. The reason I do it this way is these things have got a, the purple block has got a tendency of uh, falling over. And what it will have is the, uh, you can see the root They're doing quite well. Now what I tend to do is plant these ones slightly deeper than they were in the pot, just to give them that extra bit of support. But again, you're forming like a bowl around the bottom, so when you water them, um, you can, uh, you know, you can well the water up around the roots. Now planting them slightly deeper, the reason for doing that is so basically the ground gives it a little bit of support. And what you will actually do is you you're kind of burying the. Uh, Burying the uh, the the seed um, leaves or the, fir the sort of seed in leaves. So, if you look at the plant, obviously these are the these are the first true leaves. And if you look at the bottom, you've got these two little leaves, which are basically the same on every brassica, and they're the ones that are the first leaves to come out. Now, what you're actually doing is you're actually burying those first two leaves, um, just to give you an idea. So that's going into the ground, as you can see. Those two leaves are under the ground now, so as I push it in, you can no longer see them two leaves. Those leaves will just rot away under the ground basically, but that just gives you an idea that I'm planting them about, um, probably about an inch or so, no more than that, lower than they were in the pot. And as you end up with this kind of bowl shape around them, you, uh, you know, you're able to water just the plant. Now all I'll be doing with these, as soon as I've got them all in, is giving them a really good uh, watering in. And then what I'll do is I'll just put some um, slug pallets around them um, because slugs do love these um, just like they do any other brassica um, when they're young and tender like this. It's well worthwhile um, rather than losing your crop because um, if you do get some slugs around these they will absolutely go through these um, like bilio and then you'll end up with, you know, with them all sort of really um, damaged and stuff like that. So I'll just carry on with the next row and I'll show you when it's all finished. Okay, so there's the Nero kale. Um, what I've done is I've left some of the plants, as you notice, we've got two rows here. Um, I've gone down to one row here. What I will be doing is finishing off the second row, um, but the plants are a little bit young yet, so what I'll do is I'll leave them in the greenhouse for another week or so, and then just plant them in to fill the second row. Um, just very quickly at the back here, uh, what I've done is I've put some of this uh, sort of polythene in with a, a stake every sort of four foot or so. Um, straight across both of the back of the um, tunnels against the uh, the beans. Um, reason being is uh, 
because of the wind that we get through here obviously I don't want the, uh, the brassicas to get sort of too battered so um, I've just, just put them in there um, and I've put some, these are the um, soap balls off um, um, washing liquid if, the reason I've put them on is A, not to catch my arm when I'm picking the beans and secondly to stop the, um, you know, the, sort of the net chafing against the, uh, the bare metal where I've knocked them in, so just a quick tip. Also, obviously, on the on the top of that, I've got a bottle as well to stop it from sort of knocking against the uh, the um, the net and sort of causing it to rip. But uh, that's the um, the Nero kale. And of course, what I've done is I've given it a good watering in. So there's been a couple of watering cans on these now, and I've just put some um, um, slug pallets around in exactly the same way. I'm just going to the other tunnel. Um, that's all of the. Um, that's all of the purple sprouting broccoli and in exactly the same way obviously these are planted slightly closer together and there's obviously three rows rather than two but um, I've planted them exactly the same way, they're a little bit floppy at the moment um, but that's to be expected and um, they'll soon sort of pick up and start growing upright and again they've had another good uh, watering and um, sort of slug pallets around the, the green broccoli as you can see, I mean this will very quickly catch this up um, uh, that's all just had a really good watering as well and uh, I'll put some fresh slug pallets round um, just to you know just to make sure that we don't get any uh, damage from slugs so uh, that's the broccoli and the kale today okay so I'm just going to put a few lettuce in there and um, these are the uh, the lettuce they've been outside um, hardening off uh, for about sort of two weeks now and so as you can see the uh, the roots have formed really well. Now what I'm actually going to do is put these in amongst the beans. Now you can do this early on in the season. This ground's nice and loose. So uh, I've already got the slug pallets down. And all I'm going to do is bob them in uh, around a foot or so apart. And then really there's not, there's, there's not so many crops you can do this with. With lettuce you're able to do it. Um, but with um, you know, I wouldn't put many other things underneath the beans. Now, obviously, it's going to take the beans, um, you know, a few weeks to sort of grow up the canes and stuff like that. So, but as soon as they do, they're going to block all of the light off. So, what you need to remember is, wherever you put in um, between the beans, um, it, it needs to be a sort of fast-growing um, crop. Otherwise, if you put anything in there that's gone a long term, it'll just get starved of light, and then it won't grow properly. So I'm just popping another one in there. So what I'll do now is, because it's rained today, I don't really need to be too worried about watering these in because the ground's already wet enough. So I'm just going to bob these in about a foot apart all the way along the row and I'll show you what they look like when I've finished. Okay, so there you go, there are all the lettuce in now. Now, uh, the important thing to remember is, um, with, the, with the beans obviously, because what they will do is they'll grow up and they'll um, sort of take all the light away from the, uh, the ground beneath them. So any crops that you put in here, really, you need to be sort of fetching out within four weeks or so. So, you know, really lettuce and um, salad leaves and things like that really are the uh, um, sort of rocket and things like that. Those are the things that you could potentially grow like this. Anything else, um, you know, just, just won't get the light to develop properly. So if you are going to do this as you put your beans in, make sure it's something that's sort of, sort of quickly cropped. You know, really within a month you should be taking it back out again. But um, that's um, sort of... A way to sort of sort of economically use the uh, the room, and obviously between the bean um, bean lines, you can't put much else. So uh, just to uh, get something out of the ground where you wouldn't do normally, um, I think it's a good idea. And it just goes down about sort of halfway. So that's the last one just there. So I've got sort of I don't know about, uh, about sort of 15 plants in there. So that'll keep me going in lettuce for a while. Okay, so I'm just in the tunnel, and as you can see, the uh, the, uh, the sort of material across the top sort of sagging a little bit, and basically the cause of this is the uh, the tension on the on the net and that's kind of pulling in these sort of sidebars here. Now, if you're going to make a tunnel like this, what I do suggest is you have um, three sets of these bars going across. You need one up either side and then one up the middle. Now, when I first made this, to be honest, I didn't have enough uh, pipe work to put one across the top. But what I'm going to do is make one now. So basically, I've got a I've got an M6 bolt running through the side there where this cable is basically attached. So I'm going to remove this cable and use that same bolt to fasten it on. And then it's going to come along here, excuse the sun, um, to this one in the middle here. It's going to bolt on there. Um, and then it's going to go all the way 
of course this end here which will then push this end out and keep it all square so as you can see the side I don't know if you can quite see it from here but the the sides kind of leaning in a little bit so when I put this on it'll push it all out so basically all I need is is um, two lengths of pipe um, and this is from there to there is 11 foot um, exactly uh, just to keep it simple so the whole tunnel is actually 22 foot long so it, it, it's only basically two lengths of 11 foot um, pipe or uh, well there's going to be pipe in the middle there's going to be a bit of um, other stuff at, at, at either end because I haven't got quite enough pipe but uh, so I'll, I'll make that now. Okay so uh, now in the garage these, these are the bits of pipe obviously all recycled um, they're all sort of various shapes and size it's a bit of a bit of a sort of combination of bits and bobs really but what I'm going to do is out of these um, four lengths I'm going to weld these together to make two um, 11 foot lengths with some um, tags on the end so I can bolt it to the frame that's up the allotment so I'll do that now. Okay so I've welded the pipe together and I've welded these pieces on the end so they'll go into the middle so if you imagine the, the middle pipe will kind of sit here and it'll obviously bolt through so both of those will have the same bolt through them um, obviously that's the side up so I've, I've made sure that that's all nice and smooth so that it doesn't catch the um, the net. Okay, so on, on the other end you've got this sort of section here again nice and smooth so it doesn't catch the uh, the net and basically um, the round part will come the, the, the round bar will come through here and then obviously the bolt through that I showed you earlier on will go through there and then just, just uh, put a nut on that side and that will hold it in place. So I'll show you, I'll put them into the uh, the tunnel and then I'll show you when they're in So place. I've taken out the cable um, that was um, running along the top which is basically holding the, uh, the net up um, but obviously over time that's become slack so there the bar's in place and all they do is just simply bolt in at the side here um, in ex through exactly the same hole as the wire was through and then in the middle uh, what I've done is I've taken the, the bolt up so nobody catches the head on it but there are the two pipes coming in and those two flat pieces and then at this end um, again just like the other end I've just got a flat piece and that's bolted on um, with an M6 bolt. Now I haven't painted um, the bars yet. Um, these end pieces here are made out of stainless steel so they don't really need to be painted. Um, so what I'll do basically now is I'll just put some, some um, pieces of wood underneath just to hold the net away from it. Um, and what I'll do is I'll actually paint these in situ. But as I say this, this, this pipe here is um, it's actually galvanised, that part's galvanised um, and, and this is galvanised here so really all I need is just to put a little bit of um, just a bit of primer on there and just to paint it grey like the rest of it. Um, this part here is also galvanised um, so it's only really this last piece here which is kind of bare mould steel so what I'll do is I'll just just sort of hold hold the net away uh, with a bit of um, a bit of wood or I don't know, a plant pot or something like that just to hold it up out of the way so it's not too heavy and then um, I'll just paint these um, in the next couple of weeks when I get some time I just need to put a few more sort of cable ties on the end here just to just to sort of tidy up these end bits here where there's a uh, where the net sort of stretched out and a bit of a hole appeared between where the uh, where the two meet up and then here again um, I just need to sort of tie these bits down uh, just to sort of tidy them up and then what I'll do is as soon as the paints dry on these bars what I'll do is I'll put some cable ties through here just to hold it hold it onto the net so this this sort of join part here I'll just pull across and then just put some cable ties through all the way along so that's the um, that's the uh, the tunnel finish really um, if I just come sort of out here and just quickly show you if I don't know if you remember if you look on previous videos it was quite kind of saggy um, in the middle but if you look at it now that's really nice and straight um, and so it's obviously not sort of sagging in the middle anymore you know it's all nice and uh, nice and tight and straight and so uh, that'll keep me going for another few years okay so onto the parsnip propagator as you can see these ones really it's, it's uh, time for them to go in on some of them I've got a couple um, in each or in fact I've got three or four in some of them so what I'll do is just pull out the weaker ones and then uh, plant them in um, in in the ground now. So I'll, I'll just show you me doing that. Okay, so if you didn't um, catch me making the um, parsley propagator on an earlier episode, I'll just very quickly explain what it is. It's, it's just two pieces of um, plastic, which is basically the stuff that you put around the around the bottom of the roof, where the basically where the guttering bolts onto, which is called the Suffolk board. 
Um, I've just got a couple of pieces of that and I've drilled in a series of holes and then basically what I've made is these sort of modules. I'll just take this one out so you can see. So what's in there now is the uh, the parsnip. Now the important thing with parsnips obviously is the, the, the tapping root which is the part that you eat and you can just see there the tapping root is coming out of the bottom. Now if you disturb this root um, it causes all sorts of problems and the parsnip doesn't um, form properly so by doing it um, in this way this, this tube here is made from um, from a, um, a pot bottle, Coca-Cola pot bottle. As you can see the roots um, inside there, as you can see this. So you, you want to see if it's in the shade, so there are the roots look. So what I can do now is if I dig a hole the same sort of size as this, uh, um, as this sort of plug if you like, what I can do is just unwrap, unwrap this um, from the, so I'll just move it out, so I can unwrap it from the the plastic like that, then I can put that down the hole without disturbing any of the roots. I'll just show you me doing that now. Okay, so you can see kind of what size the, the hole needs to be if I just wrap that back around. So basically I need to make a hole kind of that big. And you can see the little tap root coming out the bottom there, that's the bit that I don't want to break. So what I'm going to do basically is with the trowel make a circular hole obviously bringing out the bringing out the dirt. Now this helps if the ground's wet now. We had a bit of rain last night. So what I've made now is a hole pretty much the same depth as that. Now what I can do, I do this in two ways. What I can do is drop that down the hole. Yeah, and then basically just by just by pulling pulling around the, the plastic, I can just sort of release that. And so now if I just show you that. There's the, the parsnip plug in the hole, and obviously at the, same, at the same height. So all I need to do now is just gently push the dirt into the hole, like that, round the, round the parsnip, just firming it down. Now the, the whole reason for doing this is what I've done now is I haven't disturbed any of the roots of the parsnip, and so that parsnip's going to grow nice um, and straight. Um, and, and obviously healthy. Now if I'd have put that just in a, a small seed tray or something like that, when I was pulling it out I would have disturbed the roots. So I'll just do another one so you can see see that again. So I'll just put, position the camera. Okay so I'll, I'll just put one opposite here. So what I'm doing is with the trowel just, just loosen up the ground. This ground's nice and loose anyway. And as I say, it helps if you've had a bit of rain. Make sure there's no stones, obviously something like that's going to cause you problems. So now I've got a hole um, the same depth and roughly the same width as a parsley. So I'm just getting out another another one of the plugs. So there's the, there's the parsley at the top. As you can see, there's the roots coming out the bottom. Nothing's been disturbed. So again, I'm just going to very quickly unravel it and what this will actually do is it will um, just, just loosen it away from the side so I know it will come away. Now all I need to do now is just drop that down the hole and then if I give that a bit of a shake basically the plastic comes away and then what I'm left with again is the is the parsnip down the hole. All of the roots are intact so there's no no damage to any of the roots and all I've got to do then is basically just put the earth back around the parsnip nice and loose. And obviously by, by germinating these parsnips in the greenhouse um, I've had considerably more success rate um, than I would have done by sowing them outside and um, hopefully they'll grow nice and straight. So we'll see later in the year what they look like as soon as um, as soon as they've grown. When I dig them out I'll show you on a, a video next spring. Okay so there are the um, the parsnips that have been grown in the, uh, the propagator as you can see. Um, I've got ten of them in the end here and what I'll do is there are some more in here uh, left over so what I'll do is I'll put them in the row if there's any um, sort of missing or anything like that but if I can just just sort of make a comparison now that's probably one of the best um, from the um, 
you know, the propagator. And if I compare that to seed that was put outside on exactly the same day, that's the largest one there. So from a comparison to from that to that, so far the, the parsley propagator is winning the day. So over the last 12 months, as you know, we've done a whole raft of things, you know, from this greenhouse, from putting up these, uh, um, these, these, these wires to support the cucumbers, these to support the, um, the grapevines, this work surface, that shelf, um, putting the grapevines in, changing the pieces of glass, um, putting the asparagus in, putting the, um, the, uh, the comfrey in, building the fence to put the espalier trees across, building the two weather vanes, um, fruit, fruit cages, beans, vegetables, potatoes, the whole thing. So what I've done is I've just put the highlights together in a really quick three minute um, video. And uh, so here's to the last 12 months. Welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. Post office clerks put up same, same position closed. And secretaries turn on typewriters and put on their coats. And janitors padlock the gates. The security guards to patrol. And bachelors phone up their friends for a drink while some married ones turn on the chat show. And we'll all be lonely tonight and lonely tomorrow. Gentlemen, time please, you know I can't serve anymore. Now the traffic lights change to stop when there's nothing to go. And by five o'clock everything's dead. And every third car is a cab. And ignorant people sleep in their beds like the dogs, white mice in the college lab. And nothing ever happens, nothing happens at all. The needle returns to the start of the song, and we'll all sing along like before. And we'll all be lonely tonight, and lonely tomorrow. Telephone exchanges click whilst there's nobody there. The Martians can land in the car park, but no one can. In close to the cameras in department stars, sing the same movies every day. And the stars of these films neither die nor get killed. It's to serve a constant action replay. And nothing ever happens. Nothing happens at all. The needle returns to the start of the song And we'll all sing along like before And we'll all be lonely tonight And lonely tomorrow Bill Hardings advertise products that nobody needs Whilst angry from Manchester writes to complain about all the repeats on TV And computer terminals some games on the values of copper and tin Whilst American businessmen snap up and gasp For the price of a hospital wing And nothing ever happens Nothing happens at all The needle returns to the start of the song And we'll all sing along like before And nothing ever happens Nothing happens at all They'll burn down the synagogue at six o'clock And we'll all come along like before And we'll all be lonely tonight And lonely tomorrow So, I hope this episode of Jim's Love and Garden has been of some use to you. I just want to say a massive thank you to all of the subscribers, all the people who've watched the videos, all the comments that have been left, and uh, I really do appreciate all of the support you can be with the channel. And from me and Dorothy, I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Love and Garden.